What's good, everybody? It's your brother, Mad Black, <clears throat> the most dangerous, most toxic black man on the internet. And I am black up in your face again with some more pro black commentary. So, this video is just going to be more of like a just a stream of thought. And I was thinking about this while I was actually doing some yard work the other day. Uh, it's, it's fall time, so obviously, I'm trying to get my yard ready. For before all the leaves started falling down. So I went out there and cut the grass, hopefully for the last time. And, you know, just cut and pulled some weeds up. And, you know, as I'm doing all this stuff, I, I just kind of let my mind sort of zone out while I'm doing it. And while I was doing that, I was sitting there thinking that when it comes to a lot of these like these relationship talks and, and videos that I see all over YouTube and uh, the rift between black men and black women, it's very rare that I see any anyone talking about anything realistic when it comes to relationships. Anytime I see relationship talk, it's always very surface stuff. Even how black men and black women refer to each other nowadays, we're, we're refer to each other as commodities. You know, I'm a high value man. Uh, I'm I'm a high value commodity. A black man is a commodity. Uh, black women only have value of a, at a certain age, and after her, she gets to a certain age, her her value goes down. So we talk about each other as as possessions. We're not even talking about each other as human beings anymore. It's not so much about being with someone who someone that you just enjoy being around. It's it's more of uh, almost just like a, a money or a possession exchange. And I, I just think that's the wrong mindset. I, it's sad to see that we've gotten away from just being in normal relationships. Like it, it was not that long ago when my wife and I found each other. You know, we, even though we are, we were born, in, <clears throat> excuse me, born in the 80s teenagers during the 90s and uh, became adults during the, the early 2000s, that's when we got together and th there was nothing that I see on the internet that had anything to really do with our actual relationship. And even she and I talk about this a lot recently because she still has a, a one of her friends that she works with who is still single. And her, her single friend always calls her, telling her all these ridiculous stories about trying to, you know, find a man and get a man and all this other stuff. And, you know, my wife is kind of like the the voice of reason for this 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 young lady. And, it's, and some of the things I hear is just sad. It's, it's sad, really, because I, I, I truly believe the mindset that a lot of people have, they'll never find any companionship. And this is for both the men and the women. And to the point where I'm not, the stuff that I hear, I don't even think you guys are even looking for a companionship. You see what I'm saying? Like I, like I said before, it's a, you want a possession. Like you, you're talking about finding a wife or finding a husband like you're trying to find a new car. And it's just the wrong mindset. And I, I don't honestly believe that many of you even understand what it truly takes to be in a, a, a real relationship. And I'm going to share some personal things with you just to kind of illustrate what goes on in a, a real relationship. And, and are you going to be able to find someone who's going to stick with you through these types of things? So I saw this post on social media that I, I really liked and I, I thought it was funny. And I, I shared it on my art page. And, you know, my wife, she saw it first and she immediately co-signed it. And the, the, the picture was how the meme was on top. It was showing like this classic romance movie and showing this is how romance and relationships are portrayed in films. And then at the bottom was this little cartoon of the husband. He's bent over with his pants down and showing his wife. And his wife says it looks a little it looks less swollen than it did yesterday. And at the bottom, said, this is what real relationships are like. And I thought that was hilarious. My wife thought it was funny. 
And, and the friends that I have who have been married for a long time, they all thought it was hilarious because they they all understand that that is how real relationships are. And like I said, you don't even see any of that in any of the, the talk that I hear about relationships nowadays on social media, whether it be on TikTok, YouTube, Instagram, whatever. It's never about the real things that you that go on in a relationship. Like are when you when you have a mate, are you going to be able to stay together after you lose a child? Like I'll I'll just talk about the worst thing that's ever happened in our and my wife and I's relationship, and that was the death of our first child. Are you going to be able to get through that? With your mate, that the one, the person that you're sleeping with or trying to get with. See, these are the things that you no one talks about in the social circles when it comes to relationships. But these are things that happen, and I know for a fact because when we went to couples counseling after it happened, there were all types of different people there, not just black couples. There were couples who were white. There was a Hispanic couple there. Just all different types of people have gone through this. So, uh, as something that that is that universal. Are you going to be down for your 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 spouse when something like that happens? And I remember, you know, when it happened, my wife she she had a very bad infection as well. There was even some touch and go time where they 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 thought they might lose her, and she had to be in the hospital for a few days. And then after that, we got home and it, and I had to help take care of her. You know what I'm saying? While she was recovering. And are you going to have when you're looking for a man? And you're talking about I want a man that's uh, a high value man. Is that is that high value man going to be there for you when you lose your child? You see what I'm saying? Is he going to be there for you, and you know, as someone to talk to or as someone just to to hold you when something bad happens? You see what I'm saying? So these are the things that I I want you to think about as far as like finding a mate and a man. Is he actually going to be there for the moments that you really need him? Like a lot of things that I hear women talk about are very superficial and things that really have no real value or meaning. But are these men even going to be there for you and be able to someone that's going to be able to take care of you? Now, I, I was very fortunate in the fact that at the time I was working doing video games for this company in California. So I was still work, I was working from home and I was working remotely. So I was able to do my work in the afternoon, but still take care of my wife, you know, because she was in the other room. So I could go in there and make sure she was okay and still make dinner and all this other stuff. Right. So would you be able to even do something like that? Or, or would you even have a man that could do something like that? You understand what I'm saying? Uh, or would you even have the type of man who would be there and, and not crumble in that type of moment? Cause I, I was going through things as well. Uh, this is my child. So obviously I'm going through a lot of pain and anguish, you know, would would that man crumble in that situation? Would he even want to be around for that situation? Because a lot of couples break up after things like that happen. But, you know, going through that, I believe it actually made my wife and I's relationship a lot stronger because we, we were we were the only people who truly understood what was going on. Even with our family members, they, you know, give little advice or uh, sympathy and, and whatnot. But it, it wasn't really... We didn't really feel like it was helping because, like I said, they they didn't truly understand what we were going through. We understood it, right? Because we were the ones who were happy when we were pregnant and then we were the ones sad when the child was lost and the child passed away. So are you going to have someone that's solid with you through stuff like that? Likewise, uh, just with my own recent situation last year where it was found out that I had a uh, a benign tumor in my chest are men when you when you go looking for a woman are you going to have a woman who's going to be with you there through thick and thin when you're in a situation where your life is on the line you see what I'm saying now my situation at the time wasn't necessarily life-threatening but at first they didn't know what was going on with me so I had to go through a lot of tests and everything and biopsies and whatnot and my wife was with me there every step of the way sitting there holding my hand or uh, being the first one I saw when I came out of the operating room. Are you going to have a woman who's solid with you, who's there for you like that? You know, my wife took off some time from work afterwards. She didn't need to, but she did it anyway just to make sure I was okay. Are you going to have someone who 
you know, all the, the, the medication that I had to take afterwards, my wife, you know, went and got my pills and organized all my medication and knew when, what time I had to take everything, right? It, it almost got to the point where it was almost a little annoying, but I still appreciated her being there, you know, she because she had to do a lot by herself at the time, cook meals and work and everything else because I was out of commission. So are you going to have a woman who's there like that or are you getting the superficial woman who looks good in a tight dress or who looks good with her, uh, you know, Botox or whatever nonsense she's she's pumped into her breast or her backside and she's going to abandon you when something happens to your health? Because I, I notice a lot of these guys who are older saying they can always just go ahead and get themselves a young woman. So they discount a lot of women who are their own age who might be better to understand them just to get a younger woman. But is that younger woman going to want to be there for you? Like very recently I, I've been watching that, uh, that new game of Thrones show. And one of the main characters, the queen, she, she married the King, but she was very young and she was still a teenager. So she married this old man and now he has leprosy and, you know, he's calling, to, to calling her to come into the room so he can, you know, pump and dump. Is, is that what these young girls really want from these old men? And, and a lot of you guys who are older talking about you want to go to another country and get yourself a young lady or whatever, uh, you might be happy in that arrangement, but is she going to be happy in that arrangement? Does she want some old man <clears throat> uh, uh, stroking and, and sweating on top of her? You see what I'm saying? And all the issues you might start having as an older gentleman, is your woman going to be there? So, with with my wife, she's my we're the same age, so a lot of the things that we go through, like if I'm if I have any health issues, she understands that. And you know, this is embarrassing to even talk about, but I'm just I'm just giving you an example of what goes on in these situations. So when I when I was finished with my operation, I came out of the operating room the, the day after, I couldn't I couldn't urinate. So they had to put a catheter in. And if anyone knows what that is, they have to put a Basically, it's a tube in a bag they have to put into your bladder to to relieve your bladder so it's not getting over full. And obviously, the only way to get to that is to go through your urethra, which is the hole that's at the at the, the opening of your penis. So I basically had two nurses putting it in there. Why I took two of them to do it, I don't know. I guess one of them, the one that I had, didn't know what they were doing. So literally, I'm sitting there with two women, one's holding my penis up and the other one's putting the catheter in. But my wife is sitting to my side kind of holding my hand because obviously this is painful. It doesn't, it does, that does not feel good having something going into your into your penis, into your urethra like that. So, but outside of the embarrassment of that situation, are you going to have a woman that's going to be there for you in that type of situation? You understand what I'm saying? These are, these are things that never come up in these these relationship discussions, are you going to have a woman who's solid and with you there when you're going through something that's traumatic or something that is life threatening or something that you know just just break like make you're helpless? Because when I first got out of that operating room, I was helpless. I couldn't. It was hard for me to breathe because they had op- they, you know they went into my chest and took this uh, tumor out, so everything was still swollen on the inside. So it was hard for me to breathe at the time. I had to practice for like a month and a half just to get my breathing back to normal and you know as someone that you love or someone that you have as a mate going to be there obviously if if someone you love they're going to be there but as the the girls that you're picking are they going to be there with you through things like that you see what i'm saying so you don't hear about anything like that in these relationship discussions and it's all about uh materialism and and all these things that really don't matter when it comes to a real relationship. So I ask you all to think about these things when you're looking for a, a man or a woman to be with. Think about someone who's actually going to be there for you through thick and thin and actually take those vows seriously uh, through better or through worse. They don't just run off on you or abandon you when things get bad and not just thinking about all the times things are going to be good. Cause my wife and I, we've had the great times, but we've been with each other when times have gotten bad. So let me know how you feel about it in the comment section. If you can understand what I'm saying <clears throat> about this type of relationship. And, and if you're, if you can 
if you're someone who's in that type of relationship and you're married and, and you've been tight like that, let me know what you have to say about it in the comment section. Anyway, mad black, and I will be back with my foot on these devil's back.